Hello everyone, my name is Sick, and welcome back to Dawn of Man. Uh, I've been on active for several months now because my old microphone broke and I had an old one lying around but it had an audible noise on the background which annoyed me very much. And I just haven't been very motivated to make new videos because of that. But I got a new Blue Yeti Nano. And yeah, this is my first time trying that one out, so we're going to see how that goes. At the same time, we are going to start a new playthrough of Dawn of Man. Now, I have made a couple of videos on this uh, a while ago, but it's been ages. I've learned some things. And yeah, I also felt at that time like I wasn't really playing the game right, but I'm going to get into that in a moment once we get into the game. So we're going to start a new one and we have several options available. We can start on Continental Dawn or the Northlands, which is challenging, but I'm not going to do that this time. We're just, just going to start on the Continental Dawn scenario and then we can have a look at the different starting areas. So we have Lake Valley, we have Mountain Lake, that one looks interesting will restrict some of our building space, I think. Maybe harsher winters, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we have the River Fork, Merging Streams, Forest River, Twisty River. I don't remember which one I started on on the last one, but Mountain Lake or Lake Valley looks pretty cool to me. And actually we have mountains here and mountains there. I don't know how that would affect us, but actually I think we're going to go for Mountain Lake. Now, one thing that I did in the last season, which I want to do again, is something I like to call ethical hunting. And I'm going to get further into that as we get into the game as well. But in honor of that, I'm going to call our settlement uh, Eti. For our ethic, for ethics, yeah seems nice. Now game mode will be normal, uh, the starting conditions can be changed, so settled or nomad. Start with no structures but extra resources, so you can choose your own location to settle. Now I'm going to start with settled. And now let's begin. Alright, so now the reason why I thought I was playing the game wrong before was because progress in the early game is very very slow. And I mean really slow. And that is because you unlock new technologies through knowledge, and knowledge is something you gain as you do things several times. Um, yeah, and that can take a long time, because in the early game you really don't have that much to do. And yeah, because of that I felt like I was playing the game wrong, but it seems like it wasn't true after all. Anyway, I think it's about time we start to build some things. Now we have some villages. Or some houses and some villagers we have a crafter over here so let's have a look we don't need to build any new tents for now i think storage would be nice we don't have a storage tent but we have a wood pile over here uh i don't think we have a stone pile yet but that is something we can also use so let's go into storage and make a rock pile right about there somebody can start building that and as for production, we already have a crafter, we have a hearth, which is standing right there, but we can use a skin dryer. And I think we are going to place that, let's see, roughly over there. And then we later on we can have some more storage for food, when we can fish and f different things like that. So we can place all of that there, the meat, and then we can store the skins somewhere as well. Now, meanwhile, we need some tools for our people. We have some bifaces, but we have more people than we have bifaces. We have some spears, so that is good. That will allow us to hunt. We have some raw skins, which need to be cured. And... Yeah. Let's see. For production, what else is there? We have the skin dryer, the hearth, the crafter, and that is basically it. That means we should start hunting some food. Now, when we press tab, we go into... What the game calls, I believe, uh, Primal Vision. That's it. In Primal Vision, we can see all the animals around us highlighted. 
also in terms of difficulty of killing them. So over here we have an ancient bison. He is orange. That means he can put up a threat. Back over here we have some mammoths. And these are truly huge, but also an enormous danger to our people. They cannot be hunted by themselves. We have some fishing spots in the lake. And over here we have a little group of reindeer. And here is where the ethical hunting comes into play, because we're not just going to hunt all of these creatures. We're also not just going to leave the babies alive. We are going to have a look at the three adults in the group. Now, we have one female, we have another female, and we have one male. That means that we have a surplus of one female. Obviously, we're going to leave the young ones alone, because, well, we're going to assume, I don't know if the game actually models that, I still haven't found out, but I'm going to assume that this herd needs the parents to function. And that these will grow up and that they will have babies and that it's a living ecology. And that means that if we kill the two females or the one male, then they cannot produce any new children. And it's going to take a while for these animals to grow up and make children of their own. And also, you know, they should have some protection of two males or one female, one male adult reindeer is what I actually meant to say. So one of these is superfluous and I say we can hunt that one. Alright so when we tab out again the game resumes and that is basically what I mean with my ethical hunting. We are not going to take any more than is necessary. We are going to do our very best not to kill every single animal in a group but we can only hunt those animals that will not endanger the continuance of that group. Now, meanwhile, we have some flints which we need to gather. We also have sticks and we can actually automate that a little bit. We have, for example, the option to gather sticks in this area. And there's a ton of sticks over here. So let's place that down. Let's have uh, yeah one person to gather sticks. We have obtained flint, which we can do. We can Cancel this task and leave it on that task. And that should work. What else do we have? We can hunt, but we are going to manually hunt. Like I said, we want to do ethical hunting. So we are going to look at every single reindeer or any kind of animal. Now this animal, this is another thing, is wounded. The hunter has given up because we just got a notification that um, yeah. The reindeer got away. Now, this is not acceptable. We hit the animal, it's wounded, therefore its chances of surviving in a realistic fashion are very limited, and it has a long life of suffering ahead, or who knows, but it's not going to be a happy life. So, we're going to recreate that hunting task. And then someone else is hopefully going to finish the job for us, so that that animal doesn't have to suffer for very long. Uh, meanwhile, uh, also, let us see, we can expand some of our tooltips. We need to have a time table here somewhere, I think. General. Uh, we already have a general, we don't need that one. Defense, speed, there we go. So let's press play, people can continue. Later on we can speed up the time by quite a bit, but for now we just want to go through our options. So we have fish, we can say we want to fish this area, so we're going to fish this bank and we're going to fish that bank right there. Then we also have the collecting and harvesting of wild plants or obtaining stone. Now stone for now I don't think we will need, but collecting wild plants is very nice. For example we have some raspberries here which we can harvest in the summer. We have some blueberries, which we can also harvest in the summer. We want to do that automatically. We don't want to keep reminding ourselves of having to do that. So we're going to create a task right there. And let's see, we can also create another task maybe somewhere else. Right there. All right, first animal hunted, reindeer. And we get one knowledge for that. Now someone is going to come over and is going to slaughter the animal and bring back four raw meat, two raw skins and one bone. So that is quite good. Now that gave us our first knowledge point and the first thing we, we can unlock, well basically everything costs five points. So we have to start getting busy here. Right, so 
As for this, we I don't know if people actually have fishing tools. Where can we can where can we see that? We have spears, knives, one fishing tool, but we are fishing two banks. So let us create a second fishing tool. And maybe two spears. And then three by faces so that at least every villager in our town has a knife. Oh, in that case, you might also make three spears. <laughs> Alright, so we can speed up time a little bit. Let's say times four. And let's have a look at what else we have over here. So we have our overview of all the resources that we have. So we don't want to have that. General resources was all account accounted for. Attachments, animals, not necessary yet. Defense, food chart, straw chart, and a workload chart. Let's have a look. Yeah, not really necessary for now. This will do. Right, so the first structure, skins dryer, knowledge plus one. Let's have a look over here. So people at this point should be able to bring skins over here and they will be left to dry. And there we go. First skin is up and hanging, but it only fits two. And I think we have several, we have six. So we can build some more. And I think we can also get more knowledge points if we build five of these. So let's say we will build another one right there. Uh, maybe I can hold shift to place more. I don't remember exactly. Let's say we oh yeah, hold shift to place multiple. So we're going to place one there. And then we're going to place one there and one there in a nice little grouping. All right. So people are gathering sticks. People are gathering flint. People are going to harvest this food in the summertime, which it is not right now. All right. So we achieved or found 10 flint and now this work area is exhausted I think the task also automatically removed itself so that is quite useful we can also maybe gather a couple of stones why not we got some more knowledge for gathering sticks and let's see is there anywhere else that we can get flint from because flint is very important for all of our tool we have flint up in the mountains but we cannot do this until we have composite tools we have iron ore which requires iron smelting so for now let us say we can yeah all right so we have two over here but first let's exhaust what we have close by and then we can move out a little bit more later on now we have five raw meats five fish this is all uh not dried that is something that we will need to fix let's see we need a food dryer. Now, the first thing that we are going to unlock, therefore, is going to be the food drying technology because it will allow us to save food for much longer. And of course, winter is a thing here. Right, so no storage slots are left. That is another thing that we need to fix. So let's say storage. And we will need a storage tent. Now, like I said, we are going to place this close to the lake, I think close to the drying racks let's see how we want to turn this like so why not let's right, so as for knowledge we have enough knowledge points now I think yeah to unlock food dryer now, that gave us another building to build so in the production tab we now have food dryers and we are going to place that next to the storage tent and one of those for now should do all right so let's see food drying unlocks the construction of the food dryer where you can produce cured meat and dry fish which are the only long-lasting foods available in the paleolithic right no storage slots left yeah so that is a thing that we need to fix and we are fixing that of course so most resources and tools also decay over time Decay is also accelerated when tools are used. Resources stored inside a structure decay slowly. This is especially important for food. Right, and this is another thing we need to check, by the way. We need dry skins. We still need two dry skins. I think we have enough, but let us jump back into the, this vision mode. We have some wild horses, an adult male, and an adult male. We have some boars, some adult, let's see, adult female, adult female one adult male we can hunt one of these boars right it's a bit easier to catch than these really fast horses i think 
what else can we hunt? Well, we have this big leg that we can move around. We have the mammoths, which we are going to leave alone for now. We have another group of reindeer over here. A female, a male, and another female. I suppose we can hunt that female as well. Because we are going to need lots of leather. Not just to build things, but also to maintain the buildings we already have. Well, let's see. This uh, stick gathering task. How do I select this? Come on. <laughs> Seems like I... Oh, it's over here. Right. Let's assign one more person to the gathering of sticks. We need a lot of those to build all the materials and things that we need. Let's make this a high priority. We already have the skin dryers, or quite a few. Uh, we also need more sticks for the food dryer. I see milestone unlocked, hunting and gathering knowledge too. Uh, we have a milestone. <laughs> Very nice. Hunting and gathering. All right, reindeer has escaped. We are going to pause this game and we are going to hunt it again because, of course, like I said, we are not going to allow these wounded animals uh, to live and suffer for too long. What we hunt, we will kill also. Even if it takes a long time to chase it down because that is the ethical way of doing things. Anyway, so we have two huts. We have three people living in each and we have... I think we can use a tooltip for people. Do we have that? Ah, it's over here. We need. We have no more space for more people, so we will need a residence. We will build a tent. We are going to turn that slightly. Right there. Which is also going to require sticks as well as dry skins. Alright, so this animal is very close by. Someone should really come and hunt it. And I think we have one hunter coming over. Come on, you can do it. Yes. Alright. Now, leave the woolly rhinos alone, please. <laughs> because that is going to be very dangerous. Alright, so we also acquired 10 berries. From over here. That is good. We have some barley, which we can harvest in the fall. And we have a first storage tent. So we get some more knowledge points for that. For now, uh, we are not going to allow the, stor the storage of materials. Clothing can be stored until we get some more storage places. But for now, tools, food, and clothing will be maintained here. Right, some berries are already being brought over. Now the food dryer is also of the highest importance. We are going to increase the priority of that. But we are simply still waiting for sticks. Right, some more skins have dried and are immediately being brought over to the tent it seems. That is good. And now we need to wait. It's still saying this, but why? <laughs> Maybe because I disabled the storage. Well. Let's turn it back on for now, and then we'll see, I suppose. Sticks and stones and flint will be saved up in the rock pile. Wood and sticks will be saved up in the wood pile. But meanwhile, let us take a look at what we would unlock next. So we have food drying. We could do sling making, which would make hunting a bit easier, I think. Uh, tanning which is also nice, funerary rituals, which is not really all that, or it's not going to give us all that much, I think. Not in the early game, anyway. We have sledge making down the line, but for that we need to be in the Mesolithic age. Tools would be very nice, we can make a ton of tools, which will make hunting and fishing more efficient. That's quite important, but making leather is also kind of good. And having a tanner... Uh, yeah. Priorities, priorities. Like I said earlier, knowledge comes by pretty slowly. Let's turn up the speed by 8. We have some food, however. We have vegetables, we have fish, and we have meat. Uh, we can create another fishing task down the line here, because the other one is already kind of exhausted. 
we are going to stay away from these dangerous animals because they might freak out. And let's have a look over here. We have an old female. Now, this is the other reason or the other kind of animal that I allow myself to hunt, which is the old. And she's also single by herself. But the old ones, they're not very important to the continuance of the herd, basically. It's a solitary animal. And then we, over here we have an adult wild horse and we have some donkeys. Now this one is very thirsty, but we have a couple. Let's see, we have a female, male, female, female. Wow, okay. So we could say hunt this female over here. Maybe hunt another female as well. It's going to thin down the herd, but they can survive that. And it's going to give us free animals to slaughter and more skins to store. Workload is very high. Your people might not complete or correctly prioritize tasks. All right. Yeah, I have a lot of <laughs> tasks running at the moment. And that is true. All right. Seems like our food dryer is being built. It has all of the sticks it needs. And first animal hunted, wild donkey, knowledge plus one. First structure, food dryer, knowledge plus one. We have raw meat times 10, so we get another knowledge point for that. So yeah, you can go pretty fast in this way. But yeah, <laughs> you have to know a little bit what you're doing to really make it hurry along. Now for tanning or tool making, bone tools would be nice. Or the leather making. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go for tools first. Tools are quite important. We have hunted our first Megaloceros. We have unlocked bone tools. And we have another knowledge point for raw skins times 10. So that's quite nice. But then let us make some bone harpoons. Like four. Now the reason for that is because someone told me, or I read on the forums anyway, that these make for good... Uh, selling material when a trader shows up so that's what we're going to do meanwhile the food dryer is completely full it seems with curing meat a resource has decayed berries okay and we have acquired 10 dry skins and that brings us up to five knowledge points again so we are going to unlock tanning now as when we click on that unlocks the tanner where you can produce a leather let us have a look. Production. We have a tanner. A place to make leather from raw skins. Now let us put that down. Uh, roughly next to these skins here I suppose. Will be a good place. Now we have another hut which means we, everyone has their own space. And they can start procreating as well. Now we don't want to do that too quickly because... Well... Winter is coming, you can see the autumn already coming in. And yeah, it's uh, important that we have enough food. Now fishing, I think we can continue doing throughout the year. Hunting also, but most of the animals move away after a while. So maybe we should look around to see if there's any other easy prey. We have a male boar, another male boar, a mouflon who is off by herself outside of a herd a wild donkey oh, but we have a male and a male so we can hunt this boar and well the workload is balanced again so some hunters will be able to go and hunt these down and let us say we will hunt this mouflon as well I think for the mouflon we will get another knowledge point because if I remember correctly we have not hunted one of those before is that a bear? A cave bear, even. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Alright, so... More berries have decayed. We have hunted the first mouflon. Like I said, another knowledge point for that. And... Yeah, I don't think we're going to build another tent. We are going to stay at free. Meanwhile, though, our first trader has arrived. So let us have a look. The first animal hunted boar... Seems like we missed a boar also then. Because I think we hunted a boar before. I guess it failed. And then maybe there's a wounded boar still running around somewhere. That would suck. 
Right. Meanwhile, though, it seems winter is setting in because we have our clothing pop up. So, clothing offers your p people protection from cold, increases welfare, and reduces damage sustained in combat. Skins and wool outfits protect people up to freezing temperatures. It is critical that you have one of these per inhabitant. When it is warm, your people will prefer to wear leather or linen outfits. These increase welfare levels and offer slight protection in combat. A typical way to ensure you have enough clothing is to set outfits to continuous production in the crafter or outfitter structure, structures and having a resource limit set of 100%. When the temperature drops below the level of protection clothing offers, the temperature of the person will start to drop. At this point, they will have to seek shelter or they will die of hypothermia. So that's quite important. Now we have skins outfits. Uh, I think those will keep people warm enough for long enough. Meanwhile, though, let's have a look at the trader. We have logs, leather, cured meat and pulses for sale. Now we have some bone harpoons worth seven. We might want to buy some cured meat for that. Because after all winter is coming, we will leave the pulses, maybe some leather as well to round this off. Uh, Alright, so that's 20. We would pay 21. Maybe we can do it with something else. 14. What else do we have for sale? We are not going to sell food. Dry skins, I think we will need. All right, we'll pay one more. It's fine. Acquired cured meat times 10, knowledge point plus one. So we need one more. And at that point, we can spend that on another unlock. And at that point, either sling making seems, seems pretty good for hunting or dog domestication. After that, we could have dog training. And then dogs can help out in hunting tasks as well. Now, you don't really get anything in terms of uh, a knowledge point generation when you get dogs. You can't have like, oh, you have 10 dogs in the village now. Now you get more stuff. Doesn't really work. All right. So we need a log. Let's have a look. This is an oak tree. We are not going to cut that down, but the beach is fair game. However, we need composite tools to cut those down. That is good to know. So I guess our next unlock will be composite tools so we can actually chop some trees to build the next structure. Now, temperature is dropping. It is freezing. It's minus one degree Celsius or 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think we're going to continue this video until we have survived our first winter at the very least. Just to make sure that we don't die. And then the second episode will be like, oh, sorry, but this one will be five minutes long because Everyone starved to death. Now, one thing that is really cool, by the way, is that the developers are uh, updating this game to this very day. Actually, last week, a farming update came out where you can have domesticated animals pulling plows and things like that to help farm your fields. And there's different things like that, but also there are new uh, models for the people. So I don't remember exactly what they look like, but you can look at the old videos or old screenshots of this game and see what the people look like. But these models are quite nicely detailed. Oh, we get a storm? Let's have a look. Ah, it doesn't actually show us anything else, but that is not good news. Right, meanwhile, it seems that time has slowed down again. So let's speed it up by 8. There's not much we can do in the winter, but let's have a look. Uh... This is almost empty, that one is almost empty, this one is slowly recovering it seems, but almost empty. Let's fish over here, because we have to, kind of. Oh, the lightning, it's a bit scary. Anyway, um, meanwhile though, let's go up on the mountain here and have a look around. So we have a lot of hills. Lots of materials, lots of flint, stone, I would assume iron as well, that we can hunt. We have some new humans joining the settlement, so now we're up to nine, which is our capacity as well. There's not a lot of building space here, but it should also make for more easily defensible choke holds. Choke points, sorry. Right, we survived the winter, knowledge plus one, we have five, so at that point let's uh, get 
composite tools. And I suppose at this point we should make uh, a flint axe. And then we can cut down, not the oak tree, the beech tree, so that we have a log that we can use for making the tanner. And then we can hopefully start making some leather. Now at this point we have a lot of meat, we have some fish. I think we can say we're pretty comfortable right now. Maybe we should build another hut. So we're going to first build a big circle of huts, everyone facing the same way towards the hearth. That's a nice place for everyone to kind of look out on. Another trader has arrived. Meanwhile, let's have a look. And he has funerary rituals. Now, this is something we can actually buy from him instead of using our knowledge points. However, it says it's worth 100 points, but he wants to trade it for 140 as a commission. And we don't have anything to really trade that for. Or we have nothing to trade for that many points anyway. So we're going to ignore this guy for now. And then we're going to put a cut in here, I think. Because, like I said, we have survived our first winter. We know we can continue for a while. And this is a, we've been playing for a while already, so it's a good point to cut it off. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oop, the tanner is done. So we need tannin also. Yeah, that's what I thought. That was something I was thinking about. At this point, we have a tannin... Uh, task. Right, so if we place it here, we have three trees that we can gather tannin from. Anyway, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys for whatever video I do next.